And my name is uh, Johan Lindfors. I work as a technology evangelist manager at Microsoft, which means I'm uh, trying to get uh, Swedish developers and IT pros to be interested and adopt the Microsoft technology stack, like products and platforms and different types of frameworks. And today I also have with me Dog. Yeah, and that's my boss. So I work as a developer evangelist, especially for application lifecycle management, how to get IT projects to go more smoothly than they often do today. Perfect. So uh, today we will uh, discuss uh, some of the security tools uh, that .NET developers should be aware of when uh, writing applications on the Microsoft .NET framework. This is especially targeted for uh, the managed environment, as in, uh, naturally the, the .NET framework aspects. We also have tools for the native code uh, developers. Uh, we won't bring those up today. And if you, are quest if you have uh, questions about those technologies and frameworks, please visit us in the booth outside here and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. So first, just uh, a, a quick uh, roundup here on, on, on why, why we're doing this presentation and why we think it's vital. And uh, we have really seen a lot of interesting questions in the booth, and that is, why is Microsoft here at WorldWasp? Why are you even bothering discussing and talking about security and what do you have to provide? And Microsoft have a good attraction in the latest years, the last years, uh, when it comes to security, and especially something called the security development life cycle, which uh, Steve Lipton will talk about tomorrow in his keynote tomorrow morning, uh, which actually uh, discusses the, the emphasis on security in the entire process of a, of a, of a development product of a, of a software. Uh, naturally, that goes back into the design aspects and in, in the architecture diagrams, uh, making threat models and such that uh, Dog will also discuss and mention and, and uh, demonstrate. But it also comes back to the development aspect, like writing code and how to actually grow your competence as a developer and leveraging tools to make sure that all of the, as you say, the, the, the boring stuff can be automatically done for you and you don't have to spend time on, on those boring, boring issues. Instead, focusing on features and grow your own competence. But naturally, also on the testing aspects. So what we have in in, in, in security development lifecycle, which is sort of the, the, the paraphrase for the entire project, it's actually secure by design and secure by default. That means that all of the products that Microsoft creates that are, let's, let's, let's say, uh, internet-focused and or customer uh, or volume products, they have to go through the security development lifecycle, which means that they have no uh, afterthought in security. Security is considered an, a prime feature, actually, when developing products. That means that they are designed to be secure by default, and uh, secure by design, and also that features that are considered to be uh, at risk, they are turned off, uh, that be, has had to be explicitly turned on, if, if so, if to say, which is sort of a different story from how it, how it used to be when you're going back to like 10 or 15 years in, in Microsoft area. So that said, this is uh, what we come from, and also you will hear a lot, of more, lot more of this uh, tomorrow from Steve Lipner's keynote. But Dog, please uh, demonstrate some of the ALM pr pr perspectives. Yes, I just should have this mic on also. Let's see. Mm. Mm. So, take it to this bucket. MSF Agile SCA 5.0 EBT Publisher Server. As probably many of you know, it's the Publisher Server, our collaboration server at Microsoft. It's the main server for storing all types of artifacts in a process, including the source control, sources, of course, source, source, code, source code, of course. You can see the old work items, you can see the reports, testing, and whatever you like. In the Publisher Server, you have had several different process templates. And uh, I think a month ago, we released the new process templates where we combined the MSF Agile, it's a Scrum Life process template, and the SDL process template. And why we did that is because in the earlier version of SDL, SDL we had uh, some notion about the, uh, that the SCN process was a rather heavy process to use. And the developer hesitated to implement them in their product or end in their uh, process, especially if they were more agile. So in this new version of the SCN, we have done an agile version 
of the STL process. And that means in this um, uh, circle where we have iteration of the green ones or sprints, we have three different types of STL tasks. We have tasks that are done just once for the project, we have tasks that is done every sprint, and we have tasks called bucket tasks. And bucket tasks are tasks that you can, as a team, should you do uh, when you have the time and when you see it's fit for you. So let me show you now how this is implemented in the information circle. Here is the information server, and on my um, the left side, the right side, I don't know, right here, uh, you have the Team Foundation Server Team Explorer where you see all the things in the Team Foundation Server. I have one uh, project here called the Coco SDI. If I want to create a new uh, team project, I do this way. Give it a name, that's bench name. And here I have the possibility to choose which template I want to use for just this team project that I'm creating right now. And here we have the new process that's our combined between the MSF API and the SDL file from server. I will not do this. I will instead use this SDL that I already here, have here. And as you see, in the information server, you can store work items. And work items are everything from requirement to security tasks to bugs. Uh, we have the possibility for documents, to reports, builds, and source control system. Source control. So let's start by work items. And here we have the questions, and I will open a new node in this question tree called security questions or queries. And here I have the possibility to see my open SEL tasks. So I click on that, and because this is a new project, so I haven't done anything, but I have four new uh, SEL tasks that I have to do. And as you see, they are one time. SDL task. I talked about three different SDL tasks, and this is one time uh, SDL tasks. If I open one of the tasks, you see here I have, I have the possibility to, to record almost everything about this SDL task. And I also have the possibility to record an exception if we don't uh, choose to use this task, to implement this task. I have the possibility to, to record even that. The next thing I want to do is to start a new sprint, a new iteration in my project. So I go back to Team Explorer, go to my team project, team project settings, areas and iterations. And here I have iterations, and I have three normal iterations. I will mean, I mean, add iteration, I will call it sprint instead, sprint four. And when I do this, I get new SDL tasks inside my team project. They are bound to this sprint. But it will take some time. So I will show something first and then go back to this queries and see what the ta task has been added. So let's talk about something else. And I will show you something in the source control that are according to the SDL. So I will open the team project again. I go to this source control. And here I have the possibility to add check-in policies uh, to guard the source control. It's uh, policies that has to be verified and controlled before they are uh, before the code is checked in. So I can add different kinds of check-in policies. And here you have example a, a check-in policy for code analysis. We have different policies for uh, native C++ developers. As you see here, we have also testing policies and other type of policies. You know, of course, you can write your own policies to secure your source and your source control system better uh, than uh, other ones. We have also the possibility to have check-in nodes. And here you can add some information to every check-in or chain set, as we call them, in the information server. And you can say that they should be required or optional. So go back here, try to do refresh and see if we got any more. 
Okay, not four. So let's do this. Let's do the next thing. I will now create a project, the first project and solution in this Team Foundation Server project. And when I do that, I also get even more SQL tasks that are specified or specific for just for this type of project I will create. So I will create a new uh, ASP.NET project. I go to my start page. Choose new project. Uh, choose use an ASP.NET MVC2 web application. Let's call it Proto Web UI. Add it to source control. Uh, create a test project automatically. Now we have the solution here. Oh, we have to check in in the source control first. I just click OK here. Now the projects are added to the source control. And here we have the solution explorer where we have two projects. I will check in this. Initial check in. And of course here I can associate different STL work items or the other work items as I choose to. So I can have a, more, a good traceability between what I check in and why I did this. So for example, if I want to open some uh, my SDL task, I can get the query here, and here I have the SDL task. And I can choose to associate, associate them with this check-in if I want to. I do check-in. I go back here, and now I hope that we have some more uh, SDL task when I click refresh. Yes, and this SL task is the SL task that was added when I added the script. So you see here, for example, that I have uh, now new SL task that should be for every script, and I have the bucket SL task that, that I can choose to, to do uh, in, in, in different order. And you see here that you see that the bucket task has also a deadline, um, so you have to, to do it before the deadline. So before I get the SDL task for the uh, project I checked in, I will show you how to um, triage a security bug in Team Foundation Server. So we go back to the Team Explorer, go to the work items, create a new work items of type and bug, um, uh, the, the most common problem section uh, in And we have a tab here called security, and here we can trash our security bugs. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, is this a security bug or not? And this is probably the security bug, and it was a SQL script injection. And as you see here, the bug bar rating is a, trying to do an object, objective analyze of the security bug and get the right level of the rating of it. So now it's just four, but I have only set the cause. The effect then, the effect is that I get an um, information disclosure. And um, information disclosure is on the server because I can read um, things from the server to the client. And here we see that the bug bar rating is high for this kind, this kind of bugs. I will go back to the OpenSQL and see if we have any more now. And now we see we have many more, uh, many more SDL tasks, and that's SDL task for this particular project. So you see, for example, we have SDL task to use cat.net that uh, you want to show later, uh, and we have many of these different kind of tasks. And one very interesting task here is a complete threat modeling for a new feature. So let me show uh, the STL threat modeling tool that we have also have. So I will start this uh, STL model threat tool here. And this is a free download. So uh, here you have the STL modeling tool. And uh, we have four different functions in the tool. Uh, 